Phoenix. Uh, sorry, I'm just such a fan. Hello everybody, Stuart here from Stubu Gaming. Today I'm taking a look at Immortals Phoenix Rising. And it came out on the 3rd of December to pretty positive reviews. I think it's scoring currently about an 8 out of 10. Now any of you who've seen my first looks or even my reviews in the past probably know I don't give games a score rating. I give my opinions and then let you draw your own opinions from what I talk about and what you see on screen. There's absolutely no point in me giving a number to a game because my numbering system might be completely different to yours. Case in point, I personally think if a game is average and doesn't do anything special, it should be given a 5, but realistically most people see 5 as a terrible game these days. There we go, that's why I don't actually give games scores. Well, let's actually talk about what the game's like. So, comparisons have obviously been drawn to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and although those comparisons are founded in a number of areas, not least the graphics, I think that it's quite a limited view on the game. It does draw heavily from various games that have gone in the past, Breath of the Wild being one of them, but there are also parts of, I would say, Skyrim, there's parts of MMOs, um, there's also parts of Kingdoms of Amalur, all of these types of games. There's even a nod to Heavenly Sword, which was a PlayStation 3 title. There's even a nod to that. So what is the game about? Well, it's set in ancient Greece, and the premise of the game is that one of the titans, um, the titan called Typhon, has escaped from his chains. Now, Typhon was one of the largest and strongest of the titans and he was actually trapped under a mountain to keep him away from humanity and the rest of the gods as well so the premise of this is for various reasons um, which I won't go into because it will spoil some of the, uh, some of the story but he basically breaks free and um, takes away the gods powers and it's your job to go and help the gods recover their powers and to free them basically from I suppose a fate that they bestowed upon Typhon himself, so some might say it's a fitting uh, fitting punishment, but uh, we are not here to judge, we're just here to uh, play the game and help. So we have rudimentary upgrade systems for most of our items. We'll have potion upgrades, we'll have weapon upgrades, we'll have armour upgrades. All of which can be done from various different parts of the world. So we'll have Circe's Cauldron, we'll have Hephaestus Forge, um, and all of these are available in the main hub, I suppose. Now, I say main hub, it's got one other person in it, and that's Hermes, Messenger of the Gods. Um, but all of the crafting stations and all of the uh, abilities are based there. Now that's available in the starting area and if I'm being honest the reason this is a first look and not a review is because I am still in the starting area. Um, I, I haven't actually gone past the starting area. Um, I should rephrase that. I've gone past the very starting area which is more of a tutorial section. I must talk about the store. There is a store in this full priced game. However, and this is what should be noted, it sells cosmetics. Now the only type of thing it does sell that's not a cosmetic is a pet. And these pets will basically fly around your head. As you can see, I will have a phoenix bird flying around my head at some point. Now I found him in game, and that's the other thing that I will talk about. Um, but you can also buy mounts, for instance, which are leveled up and have got higher stamina, so they can run for longer. That being said, you can get mounts and you can get tames in-game by following very simple instructions. So, on screen at the moment is the system for obtaining tames. And the idea is, you sneak up and you have to keep watching the animal that it basically highlights. So, most of them will run off and one will stay behind. Keep an eye on them and if they start having a red exclamation mark above their head, Stop, slow down, maybe move away a little bit, and you will eventually tame them. Now, easier creatures will be easier to tame, and the more legendary or the higher tier 
tames will actually take longer. It's a very simple but very effective system. Now there are some quite detailed and engine cutscenes which really do fit with the aesthetic of the game and because of that it's uh, nice to see they haven't tried to go CGI. Now I must admit I am a big CGI cutscene fan but in this I don't think it makes much of a difference and it's definitely not a problem that they are in engine because the graphics are so unique. Um, for this type of game I should say because they're even different to Legend of Zelda. Now I suppose I should talk about the game mechanics um, although it does feel like a bit of a disservice to talk about that sort of thing when the game is obviously so beautiful to look at and to just experience but the mechanics are what the bulk of players will be experiencing and interacting with so You've already seen some of the taming mechanic, which is a nice, simple, but effective system. Um, the general traversal of the world is the same. So you have three main forms. Well, four if you consider swimming, but three main land-based forms of travel. And they are mounts, as you can see on screen at the moment. There is walking or running and there is also the gliding there's no real flying because you do fall steadily from a height um, and that's only while your stamina holds out so there's no endless gliding around here but it fits seamlessly with how large and how varied the terrain is and I do think that the ability to climb everything is quite useful I say everything there is a caveat certain surfaces are impossible to climb but to be perfectly honest there are no tools to help you climb in this it's all freehand so it kind of does make sense we should probably talk about combat combat in this game consists of five main points you have your dodge and parry um, and then you have light heavy and ranged attacks um, I suppose you should also consider block, although that's not really that useful in this game. Your light attacks are mapped to your sword, your heavy attacks are mapped to your axe, and you cannot change those. They are set. Um, the items that you've got, the abilities that you have, and the blessings that you get are all dependent on choice. I suppose the blessings are more dependent on where you have reached in the game and they are a given passive um, that you unlock at certain stages. You don't get to select, it's literally just a case of this is what you are given at the given time. Now I've only got the one, it might be that once you've unlocked more than one you choose which one for that particular god you use, but I don't think there's any chance you can not use one. Skills you upgrade in the major town, um, I call it a town, it's actually the Hall of Heroes, um, and there's only one NPC as mentioned before, um, but you can upgrade those when you have enough uh, coins to do so. And uh, as with most games you do have fast travel. I'm not going to go too much into all of those mechanics, I think that will be saved for a future video. The only thing I will talk about is quests do not appear randomly in the world. You have to get them all, currently at least, from Hermes' Heroic Task Board, which is based in the Hall of Heroes. I could go on to loads of mechanical stuff and all about how things work, but I think I just want to finish on the fact that I'm actually more impressed by this game than I thought I would be. There's more variety um, in the items and the swords, weapons, everything that you will find. Yes, the store is there in the background, but to be honest, I haven't actually bought anything from the store apart from the horse that I bought, and that was with the free coins that I was given when I got the game. I haven't spent any money at all. All of the armors that you can see currently on screen I found while I was out and about just by opening chests. Same with the helmets. Now the ones that are, are in the store are cosmetic only so they will go over your currently equipped item. Won't change any of its abilities but it will change the look of it and I think that's a much better system if I'm being perfectly honest. So you have the best of both worlds. Items that you find in the world and then you can put a skin over the top. So would I recommend this game? Um, it's always difficult to recommend a game because you never know what your audience is going to enjoy. But I am thoroughly enjoying it. I think there's more than enough here in an RPG sense that our RPG enthusiasts will enjoy it. There's more than enough in an adventure sense so that adventure enthusiasts will enjoy it. 
and it's just got a nice lovely charm to it that you don't find in most games these days. Well guys, there you go, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you do click the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and please make sure you do leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts as well. If you want to support me more, I do have my Patreon page, which is linked on screen. Well, not linked, but there is definitely an address on screen. And it would be great if you could come and support the channel that way as well. Well guys, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it and look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye for now.